So Airbnb is banning parties, but it's also making a positive impact on neighborhoods. We are the Real Estate Robinsons. Hey everyone, if this is your first time here, I'm Tony. I'm Sarah. And we're real estate investors who quits our day jobs by investing in short-term rentals. And we're here to show you how you can do the same. Now, in today's video, we're going to talk about two big updates at Airbnb. The first one is that they are officially banning parties, <laughs> right? Now, um, I think we've all probably been to at least one party at an Airbnb. I know. Yeah, party have you been to without me? Your 25th birthday party? Oh, shit. I forgot that was an Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bad memory. We actually rented an Airbnb in uh, Hermosa Beach, and and I mean it wasn't like a rager. No, but we were responsible. I we think, were responsible. There was are. a lot of people, you know. That's true, but it was big property. It was, but big, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and yeah. it wasn't a residential area. Yeah, you know. That's true. And I think the neighbors were complaining about us. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So. Sorry to that host. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we weren't that young, we were 25. <laughs> but anyway, Airbnb is officially banning parties. Dude, I love parties, can I? No. So let's talk about kind of, first, like what do they mean when they say this? Um, so we've got the, the article up here and there's a few things that, that we wanna call out. So first, Airbnb has gotten kind of a bad rap as like a party like instigator, right? It's yeah. like a platform that people go to just to kind of throw these big, wild, raging parties. I'm sure you guys have all seen the headlines of, you know, Airbnb party ends in shooting or Airbnb party, you know, does this thing or people get injured at this Airbnb house party. So uh, I think in an effort, which is smart, um, you know, I think um, they've really kind of started to try and restrict the number of parties that happen on their platform. So what they did, they started in 2020 with the onset of COVID as that they, they, they just banned all parties. They say, you know, no more parties at any Airbnbs. If you're found out having a party as a host or as a guest, there will be consequences. What consequences? It was supposed to be temporary, but what they saw is that there was such a positive impact um, in terms of the reduction of number of parties they were seeing, complaints that they were receiving that just recently decided to make this party ban permanent. Forever, yeah which is exciting as a host now that we're hosting, you know, I think one of my biggest nightmares and we hear this often from people that ask us, you know, how often we have damage. I think the consensus is that most of us hosts are terrified of that happening to one of our properties. Yeah. So the fact that we now have this rule in place from Airbnb themselves um, makes me a little bit more at ease, you know, and comfortable to know that they have our back. If we get a complaint from a neighbor and we have proof that there's a party going on, Airbnb can really help us kick yeah. these jerks out. Yeah. One thing that, you know, as we were reading through the article that really stood out to me is that Airbnb said that they banned almost 7,000 people from the platform uh, last year because of this party throwing Rule, yeah. violation that people were breaking. That's a lot. That's a of lot of people, people. Yeah. right? I mean, I know that there, there's like over a million listings on Airbnb at this point, but still 7,000 people to get banned, like that's that's a lot. Yep. That's, but that's amazing. It you is know? amazing. It shows that they, they mean what they say and they're gonna take action if there are people that are breaking their, their policies. Yeah. I mean, Airbnb has like a, a a very strong business incentive not to piss off the neighbors of their short-term rentals. Absolutely. Because if that continues to happen, and you know, you're seeing a lot of changing policies around short-term yeah. rentals across City the nation. City officials can ban Airbnbs. So it, it's very much in Airbnb's best interest to play nice with the neighbors. Yeah. Um, so this, I think, party ban is one of those things. Now, um, along with this, they rolled out some other things. So actually, first, let me, let me say this, right? They said that it's been working, like this party ban they instituted um, temporarily at first. After they instituted the party ban over the next year, not including COVID, not including 2020, they saw a 44% decrease in like noise complaints for their for their the the properties that are on the platform. It's a pretty big drop, you know, yeah. it's almost half, right? Um, so I think when they saw those encouraging signs, which is kind of what pushed them to, to do this. And what they also said in, in the news when they released this was that COVID kind of really started this trend even more of making um, Airbnbs as the, the way to go and party because all the bars and clubs were on lockdown. You couldn't really go out and, you know, party with a group of people. So people were really going to Airbnbs to create this party weekend experience for them and their friends. So yeah. do you remember there was a, so we're like in a lot of Facebook groups and I remember there was one host in a Facebook group. They had a, a big cabin 
and, and the um, Smokies. I know it was exactly in the what Smokies, you're talking about. and it, it was or, like a real ratchet <laughs> party. They were taking like a party bus from Atlanta, I think. Yeah, all the way up to Tennessee. In like a huge property, I remember it was like it slept like forty, 40 people. you know. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, and like they were like literally like we read we we found the flyer and it was like nonstop parties from like <laughs> six a.m. to to six a.m. the next day for uh, like a three day weekend. Unlimited so. alcohol, just like crazy stuff. Yeah. And it's like as a host, I would be so mortified. Nervous. Yeah, mortified is probably a better word. Yeah, no, be I would have been. So, I would have sold the whole house. <laughs> I would have said, "Girl, I'm not dealing with that." Before we move on, we'd really appreciate if you guys could give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications. Every new subscriber really does mean a lot to us and we have a crazy goal of getting to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're enjoying the content, please, please, please subscribe and turn on the notifications. Also be sure to connect with us on Instagram. I'm at Tony J. Robinson. My lovely wife is at Sarah Rad and we're at The Real Estate Robinsons on TikTok. We've also got a totally free download for all of our subscribers. If you head over to alphageekcapital.com forward slash calculator, we've put together a free tool that helps you analyze properties you're considering purchasing as a short-term rental. And we've also got an event coming up. Ah, so excited. It's a three-day event focused all on teaching you how to buy, manage, and scale your short-term rental portfolio. We'll walk you through all the steps you'll need to follow to get started. And we have so many good speakers lined up to bring you so much more value. The event is in beautiful Newport Beach, California from September 11th through the 13th. If you want to learn more about the event, head over to strsummit.com. We've actually got early bird tickets on sale right now uh, and prices are gonna go up soon. So lock in yours before it's too late. And I promise you this is gonna be like the best conference you've ever been to. So get your tickets. Last, if you're not yet an Airbnb host, you can sign up using our link in the description. You'll get a cash bonus for signing up and we'll get a small cash bonus for referring. So when Airbnb first rolled out this party ban, they also rolled out this neighborhood support line in a number of jurisdictions. And this was pretty much a direct line for neighbors to communicate any concerns directly to Airbnb. So- And we've experienced that. It's like one of our properties, and we very rarely get complaints. Like yeah. most of our properties are pretty like small, especially in Joshua Tree. But we got one complaint, like Airbnb called us and said, a neighbor called us and complained. We were like, we were like how the heck? Yeah, what? Like, what was the process behind that? And after reading this article- We're it, like, oh, oh that's there, how it there must be one of those in, Neighborhood support lines. In the Joshua, in Joshua Tree, Tree market, area. yeah. But essentially it's like a way for neighbors to call Airbnb directly to voice their complaints. Again, I think a really smart move by Airbnb yeah. because if Airbnb is the one gathering all these complaints from neighbors as opposed to the local police officers or you know the the city or the county. They're that kind it, of ahead of the game. Exactly. So they're able to kind of cut some of those issues off b before it gets to, to be a bigger issue for, yeah. for Airbnb. So and a little bit annoying for the house, I feel like, right? I mean, it's it, like the, the neighbors are kind of like tattletailing on you. It is. And like sometimes it's unjustified. Like we have we have a couple of neighbors at our properties that are just like unreasonable. And like they just the hate guests, the idea that they live next to an Airbnb. Right. And like they'll come like we have one guest complain that like the the we have like a, an exterior security camera. They're like the lights are too bright outside. You know, just no, like, it wasn't even those lights. They were like cute little pathway lights. It was a pathway. Light they were there? the pathway lights that they were complaining about. They said that they're too bright for him. So he can no longer sit outside at dusk and read because the lights across the street, our little pathway lights are too bright. And it's not even like, they're like the solar lights you get from like <laughs> Home Depot that like barely even get that bright, wow. Yeah, he just hates us. But anyways, yeah. he called the neighborhood support line. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Another thing that was in this article that I thought was really interesting is that Airbnb and Verbo have actually made a partnership to yeah, try and enforce cool. this party ban. Um, so any like repeat offenders on Airbnb, that address is being shared to Verbo and vice versa. Uh, so these two major competitors are sharing information, sharing information to really make sure that these perpetrators, both as hosts and guests, um, are not being allowed to participate on either platform. Yeah. So just shows again how, how seriously they're, they're kind of taking this. 
So overall, I am super excited about this party ban. Yeah. Um, I think we've been lucky that we haven't experienced too many party goers at all of our properties, mm -hmm. but we have just a little bit. So again, just having this ban um, behind us, it makes me feel better as a host. Totally. And now I feel comfortable like calling Airbnb support line and saying, hey, we think there's a party going on. Yeah. We've tried to reach out to the guests, they're not responsive. And knowing that Airbnb will hopefully ban that guest, yeah. um, assuming that we can show and prove that that's what they were doing. Cool. All right, so let's go on to the next topic, which is Airbnb um, actually making a positive impact in some communities. So here, here's what happened. Airbnb paid this third party like consulting company to do this huge economic impact uh, report for a couple of counties in Denver, like, um, or at least around the Denver area in Colorado. And the results were, were pretty positive yeah. for the most part. Now, if you don't know, in the city of Denver, you cannot rent out your property as a short-term rental unless you also live on the property. So it's really- Kinda like house hacking? Yeah, you have to like house hack essentially if you're gonna short-term rent in Denver. So I kind of think this report was a, kind of a, a dig yeah, at, totally. at Denver to short-term. Yeah, totally, to show like what it can really do for the Denver area. Yeah. So let, let's read through what some of the, the highlights are. So first, um, Short-term rental visitors spent $1 billion across five counties uh, in and around the Denver area in 2020. Um, that spending supported almost 15,000 jobs, and that represented 15% of all jobs across those five counties, generating almost, uh, it was about $600 million in workers' earnings during that same time. Those are big numbers, wild, yeah. right? <laughs> to, to spend a billion dollars um, and to generate 15,000 jobs, like those yeah. are undeniably really positive things right. happening in those in those counties and, and in that economy. Um, another thing that's in here that I thought was really interesting because this is something we get a lot of like heat for from like, you know, social media haters is the impact on the local housing inventory. Oh yeah. So if you go to any one of our TikTok videos, there's always at least one person saying that they, you know, hope we die and all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> because we're like the worst people in the world because we're, we're, stealing we're stealing housing and we're doing all these things. First of all, in Tennessee, almost every property that we own is like surrounded by short-term rentals. Um, so none of those properties would even be like traditional, like primary residences. Yeah. All of our new construction homes, they were like literally dirt before. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, actually. Like they were literally Or dirt. like breaking bad status. Yeah, like we've bought like hoarder homes, like actual people like squatters living there. Yeah. Like these are these weren't houses that So just like this article, I feel very proud of us that we are making a positive impact. And yeah, there's so many people that work for us that I think have positive or not even for us, but like with us that have positively benefited from like Absolutely. our portfolio yeah. growing. Like people are literally literally like feeding their families off of our short-term rental business and we're yeah. so happy and appreciative that we can provide a lot of people with a means of, of living um, and, and you know doing good work. All right, so let me just kind of point out some of the stuff that, that's in this article when it relates specifically to, to housing because I think it's I think it's kind of interesting. Um, so what it says here is that across the five counties where the study was done, both the total number of vacant units and the share of seasonal, recreational, or occasional use units has been stable, suggesting that occupied homes are not being converted to short-term rentals at high rates. So essentially what they're saying here is that all of these properties that are coming onto Airbnb were already vacation rentals in some way, shape, or form, or vacation homes for the primary owners before. So it's it's not saying that you're seeing this you know, unreasonably high increase of single family primary residences being converted into short-term rentals. Um, which again is, I think, a lot of what you see in, in Joshua Tree as yeah, well, for sure. and and definitely in Tennessee for sure. Um, there's some other kind of data here that supports that, but basically what they're saying is that short-term rentals are not the main driver of the housing, like the rental housing shortage in these five counties where the study was being done. Um, if anything, the bigger constraint is the the lack of new construction that's going on in those markets to support this huge wave of influx of millennials like us that that are moving into the the renting space um, and the baby boomers and whatever the generation is between baby boomers and millennials that are still renting as well um, but the the share of short-term rentals and vacation rentals has been relatively fat uh, re not fat <laughs> relatively flat uh, across the the time they've been doing this study so anyway why is airbnb doing this 
So we, we talked about this a little bit already with the Airbnb party ban, but it, again, it's to protect Airbnb's interest um, and their ability to continue to scale in a lot of these markets. Yeah. Um, one of the big knocks on Airbnb is that it, it's economically detrimental. Some people mm -hmm. really do believe that. Um, and Airbnb's coming back with the receipts, right? Yeah. To say, no, hold on. No, we're actually benefiting. Yeah, creating something positive in the economy and the neighborhoods. Yeah. So anyway, we thought this one was a really interesting read. We thought we'd share it with you guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts, right? Yeah. If you guys have any, you know, counter ideas or maybe you agree with this, uh, drop a comment. And let's uh, get some heated discussions going on and uh, maybe we can convince each other otherwise. But that's it for today, guys. I'm Tony. I'm Sarah. And we are The, the Real, Real Estate, Estate Robinsons. Robinsons.